five. Gedovini also hasn't jumped, so we'll work out exactly what's going on in a moment's time as we focus now on this first heat of the men's 800. So Simone Barantini of Italy on the outside. This is Andreas Kramer. That's silver four years ago. With the Swedish record holder, 144 this year. Mozinovic, Bosnia, Tuala, France, Christoph Kessler of Germany, improved to 145.27. Big applause there from the crowd. And a man in an Italian vest as well. I wonder if he has Barantini on the uh, other side of that cardboard banner. Daniel Huller of Hungary, Thibaut de Schmidt of Belgium, and then Jake Whiteman. Well, he said that despite winning the World 1500 title, that's generally been his main event of the last few years, he still wants to be considered an 800 runner too. A middle distance man in the fuller sense. Jeff Whiteman was the stadium announcer in Eugene. Not so here, but Jake was joking that he'll be getting on his nerves as a coach instead. <laughs> Whiteman, Desmet, Huller, Kessler, Tual, Mujazinovic, Kramer and Barantini in this first heat. So, top three going through automatically and then four-time qualifiers across those four heats. So Jake Whiteman, outstanding kick in Eugene. And afterwards beating Jakob Ingebrigtsen, saying that he expected Ingebrigtsen to come through. The Norwegian made a remark afterwards that he was beaten by a worse runner and tried to speak to the Norwegians to get an idea of what kind of context that was said in. Whiteman said that, yes, probably most of the year he appears to be the worse runner, but when it came down to it on the day, he was in front of the Norwegian. It was fantastic, of course, in the men's 5,000 metre final. Kramer leads this one out in 51-53. The Swede mentioned sometimes that he appears to be off colour, but strong here. We'll wait and see how he times this last lap and whether he has enough to hold on. Barontini, one of a big group of middle distance running Italians looking very strong over the last couple of years. Gabriel Tual, maybe not as quick as his teammates, Robert, but still a medal contender. Jake Whiteman now on the outside in a good position. Kramer there, trying to focus. Will he have enough to be in the top three? Whiteman comes through, and Tual, and Barontini, De Smet, also overtaking the Swede. Oh, that's so close. Kramer just running out of steam after being the leader in the early stages. Time for Whiteman, 1.45.94. So, job done from his point of view. And Tuwal also looking pretty solid. The man who's hoping to go higher than the sixth and seventh he's achieved at the previous two editions of these championships. Well, that was a super quick time there from Whiteman and Barantini. Anything under 146 at this stage in the championships, he's very quick running indeed. It was set up by Kramer with that thrilling first lap of 51-53. When, when that time came up, I thought, that is very, very quick indeed. And I have to look back, I think that's probably amongst one of the fastest heats we've ever seen at a European Championships when there's been three rounds contested. I mean, that was Kramer who made it quick. Uh, he's doing his traditional job of front running, but then just gets swallowed up as the likes of Barantini, Tual and Jack Whiteman start getting, getting into gear and going through them, really getting the legs shifting there. I wouldn't be at all surprised. Well, we're due four fastest non-automatic qualifiers from these four first rounds races. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if several of them come through from that heat because normally it's around a 147, 148 at this stage in the competition. Here it's a 145. So 
Kramer and De Schmidt both running 146 